Hi, welcome to lesson 8.5, uh, solving acute triangle problems, compass bearings, and directions. So I've already looked at some problems uh, from 8.5 and in solving uh, triangles. Now what we're going to do is we're going to involve uh, directions and compass bearings. So cardinal directions are the directions where we recognize north, south, east, and west, or in clockwise direction, north, east, south, and west. Or in case you have a hard time remembering where the directions are, uh, never eat salty worms. Or you notice that these two letters here spell the word we. Oui. Not we oui as in French, but we oui as in us. North is always directly away from us. Those are the four main cardinal directions. And then we've got the half cardinal directions, which would be northeast, which is at the 45 degree mark between north and east. Uh, southeast is a 45 degree mark between south and east. Uh, southwest, 45 degree mark um, between south and west. And then, of course, the northwest, which is 45 degrees between west and north. Um, and the actual, the principal coordinates, of course, principal directions would be north is zero, or as you go all the way around, 360 degrees. East is 90 degrees, because that's a quarter of the circle. South is 180 degrees from north, all the way around here, which is half the circle. And then we go up to west, which is 270 degrees, which is three quarters of the way around the circle. And then finishing off, of course, back up at north, which is then 360, as I've mentioned earlier. Anytime you want to use a compass, you would hold the compass with north facing away from you. And this arrow is magnetized, um, so it would point to north. And if you're not aware how compasses or, I'm um, sorry, uh, magnets work, north and south attract each other. So the magnetic north of the earth uh, will attract south uh, charged uh, items. Uh, so this arrow would actually be a south pole, but it gets attracted towards the north. That's why this would point towards the north. So anyone, anytime you want to get your bearings, pardon the pun, um, of where you are, you would hold the compass with north pointing away from you, and then you turn around, you turn your body until that arrow points towards the north, and then you know where north is, and then from there you can sort of figure out, of course, where east, west, and south are from your direction. Okay, so those are the cardinal directions. We also have these things called bearings. And bearings are the same sort of idea, except they don't use north, south, east, and west. What they do is they just me measure the degrees from north in a clockwise direction, so around in this direction, um, starting at zero, and then whatever angle we get to as we continually count up from 0 up to 90, up to 180, up to 270, and then back up to 360. Whatever angle you get to, that is the bearing. So if we were to um, look at point P and we start north and we rotate in a clockwise direction down to this line joining this center or the origin O to P, that would be line segment OP, that angle of rotation is 65 degrees. The bearing, so it would be 65 degrees, which is north, 65 degrees east, because it's 65 degrees towards the east. Uh, that's for the cardinal directions. And then the bearing of that would just be 065, or you can just say 65 degrees. But when you write it, you need to put the zero in. You need the third, the third figure there. For point Q, we know that this is north, and then if we look, if we were to kind of rotate this way, we could see what this angle is. Now I can tell this angle by looking at this arrow down here. We know that circling around from north starts at zero and it goes around, clockwise around, until it reaches OQ. And that angle is 300 degrees, which means what's left over here is 60 degrees, because the full circle is 360 degrees. So if I were to say north and then determine how many degrees 
to where it's the west it is, I would say this is north 60 degrees west. But the, so that's the cardinal direction, but the bearing of that would be you start at north and you rotate in the clockwise direction until you reach OQ and that angle is actually 300 degrees. So the bearing is 300 degrees whereas the cardinal direction is north 60 degrees west. On page 2 we see we've got um, we use bearing bearings to um, determine points in reference to one another. So if I were to say that the bearing, so this is point B here, and this is point A. If I were to say bearing of A from B, so if I'm looking from B towards A, the bearing is 65 degrees. So you start facing directly north, you rotate 65 degrees towards the, uh, in the clockwise direction, and you sight point A that means that point A is 65 degrees bearing from point B. If you go the other way around and you start at point A and you want to see what the bearing of point B is from A, well you start here and you rotate around uh, in the clockwise direction 245 degrees to look towards where point B is. So the bearing of B from A is 245 degrees. Okay, so this will be important when we look at some of the examples a little bit later. Alright, here's a uh, little example. State the bearing of the point P in each of the following diagrams. So look at here, point, uh, part A. We want to see what the bearing of point P is. So we see that from OP, this is the origin, the origin here in this line segment OP, from north, rotating down uh, in the clockwise direction towards line segment OP, we see that that's an angle of 40, 48 degrees. So the bearing would be, it's the same thing because it hasn't crossed. Um, so we can say, sorry, this we can say this is north 48 degrees east in the cardinal directions, but for bearing we can just say it's 48 degrees and then once you write that with the zero in front, we know that it's clockwise. If you look at part B, we see that this is, well, the point P is not anywhere above the east-west line, so that means that it's not going to start with north for the cardinal directions. We see it's closer to the south, so we would say that this is south 60 degrees towards the west. So point P here, of course, is the origin again. Point P is south 60 degrees west. But for the bearing, the bearing is we rotate clockwise past 90, which is where the E is, past 180, which is where S is, and it doesn't get up to 270, so obviously it's going to be between 180 and 270. So 180 plus this extra 60, so then you just add the 180 plus 60 to get a bearing of 240 degrees. Um, part C here, the uh, P is not in the northern part of the compass rose here, I'll just mark the origin again, it's down in the south, the southern, southern side, so it's south 40 degrees towards the west, so it's south 40 degrees, or sorry, east, south 40 degrees east. But the bearing, again, we start at north and we just rotate clockwise. We pass 90, we don't get to 180, we're actually 40 degrees shy of reaching 180, so we just take the 180 and we back 40 degrees off of that, so it's 90 and 40 degrees away from 180, so that would be 140 degrees of the bearing. So the bearing is 140 degrees, just because we're 40 degrees short of getting to 180. And then for part D, same sort of thing. Now this one, point P is above 
is the nor northern part of this, uh, to the north of the east-west uh, line here. So OP is north, well we know this is 20, and we know each of the angles between the, the principal cardinal directions is 90 degrees. That's 90 in here, this is 90, that's 90, this is 90. So if we know that this is 20, then this means that this part here has to be 70. So point P is north, 70 degrees west. But for the bearing, we, we just go clockwise. So we go past 90, past 180, past 270, and then we're 20 degrees past 270, so that would be 290 degrees for the bearing.